Welcome. In today's video, I'm going to unveil a secret, a tip that every Power BI developer needs to know. What is that tip? Well, it's pertaining to the new card visual. So many developers put KPIs at the top of a dashboard like this. It's a totally correct way to do it. Our eyes read top down, get the high numbers first. Usually the quick follow-up question to any dashboard that has KPIs at the top from a business user is, I want to click them and have it change the dashboard. Well, the cards don't do that. So what historically had to happen was you had to create bookmarks, a complicated process to kind of trick it into doing that. Well, there's a secret. Now with the new releases, there's a way to do it. So check this out. The top row is the standard KPI card giving the total sales for a store. Right below that is the hack and the tip I'm gonna show you today. The row and the cards are interacting. The KPIs, you can click them and it changes the dashboard. This is a game changer for that next level interactive functionality of a dashboard. So we're gonna dive into it now. After this video, you will have a full understanding for how to do interactive KPI cards. Let's dive into Power BI, let's go. All right, so here we are. Here's how this video is gonna go down. I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of this dashboard showing the functionality, and then I'm gonna show you how to build it. What you need to do is go into the description of this video, go to the link for the GitHub file, and follow along. You're gonna follow step-by-step step how to do this. It's gonna train you up, you will be successful. Uh, and then we'll have more and more updates coming your way. So thank you for, for diving into this. Let's get into it here. What we're gonna do is recreate this row right now. So let's jump into a tour of the dashboard. Okay, very standard situation at the top here where we have a KPI visual, we can confirm that. Let me turn the highlighting cursor on just to uh, kind of help you see things a little bit easier. So here we have, you know, the standard KPI card, the new one, and it makes sense. It's very simplistically saying here are the net sales for all these different calculations, uh, regional calcs and the data model over here, uh, but they don't interact. So if I say, I just want to see, you know, playing fields, I can't click it. Nothing happens. So check this out. Here's going to be the secret and the tip. <clears throat> The exact same KPIs right here. Oh, if you notice, I'm hovering, they're slightly changing. And that's because uh, they're actually going to be interacting. So if I click Rocky Mountain Sales, well, boom, now it's just changed to Rocky Mountain Sales. Maybe I add in Flat Plains and Far West. Now these KPIs are serving multiple purposes. Uh, so how in the world are they doing that? We're going to show you right now. And what's called the Lab Tab. So on this tab is where you can follow along. We're going to build this out. So let's go. <clears throat> All right. The key trick is that this is only possible now for like a, a hack by not actually creating cards, but by creating filters that look like cards. And this is possible because of the new releases that just happened. So let's go through the steps doing this. I'm going to show you what to do. So in our data model, just to ensure that we're all lined up. There's sales and sales happen uh, for stores and every store has a region. Very simple joining. You can be any kind of join in your own data model, but it's important to understand what that looks like. So in this table, store goals, it simply just says there's a store region and that store region is called Far West. And I'll talk about this filter name here. That's going to be a, a part of the, this, the secret that you need to do as well. So let's build these. How do you do it? All right, if we start, we're going to just add a new filter. So we have to use the new slicer. I'm gonna click this slicer, and I know that I want my KPI cards to be set up by region. So I'm gonna very easily just click store region. And as you see here, it doesn't look anything like that right now, which is why this video is gonna be important. So I'm gonna show you how to transform it into that step by step. Let's do it. So with this slicer, the first thing we're going to want to do, the high level game plan is to group each of these or to format each of these to be essentially cards and KPI cards themselves. Cause now you can make the filter look just like a KPI card. As you saw earlier, you can't even tell a difference. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to show you the tips to do it, how, how to do it. So you have this card added now. First thing we need to do 
is just ensure that the right values are showing up. So I'm going to go into my filters and on this visual for this specific case, just because of the way the data model is made up, I need to exclude blanks. So I'm going to do that. All right. Now we're going to go through the settings on the right hand side, how to set this up. So depending upon first the layout, we're going to start with the layout. You're going to want, if you want a single row, if you want multiple rows, this is where you can control that. In this case, I'm going to have a single row, everything from left to right. Maybe you want to have a grid where it's like three and three like this, or even two and, and two, three and two. There's different ways you can set it up. Um, typically for this example, I KPIs at the top. So I'm going to do a single row. Okay. So we have a ways to go, but we have this here. So you're going to get this set up and I'm going to kind of just span it over the same region. So now let's go through the steps to clean this up and how to add more stuff to it to make it become a KPI card itself. We're going to go down the list. Firstly, this title, we don't need a title. It's going to be intuitive enough. Now you can see we have our values here, Atlantic far West. So it's interacting and working, but we need to, put more data into it so it shows up like a KPI card and make it look like one. So what we're going to, we, this confirms the functionality works. So let's do a couple of things for the slicer settings. I don't want to have single select. I want people to pick whatever they want. So I'm going to turn off single select. Now I can pick multiple cards and let's keep going. The shape. Uh, so it's just this subtleness when you can add a rounded rectangle, it just softens everything. Not too much, it gets a little crazy, but I found that I just like 10. 10 points gives a nice kind of soft curve to it. Cool. So the, we're gonna frame up the buttons, what they look like, then we're gonna put the data into it. Uh, the framing up and the formatting being the first step is kind of easier. Then there's gonna be a trick and a hack to get the values to show up in there, which I'm gonna show you. So we have the shape, we know we want the rounded corners, but you can see the size just isn't the same. And here's the key reason why for these buttons, you're going to have a default setting. <clears throat> so with all these buttons, you can pick how you want them to interact. If you're hovering over them, if you're pressing them or once they're selected and we'll get into this, but in this case for default, I'm just going for first that framing in that size. And what you'll see on the bottom right hand side actually is a shadow. So if you turn on the shadow and the glow, it's going to update these things to be more squared up. So we have that now and there's still some slight differences. So I'm going to show you how to tweak that as well. Within the button state, there's a padding. And so I'm going to set this first to narrow, but there's also going to be a space section that we'll get to for how to configure the space between buttons. And we'll do that really quick, but go back up to the layout section. And as we set up the single row, let's put the space between the buttons to zero. We just want them close. So now look at that. We have these cards. They're starting to show up. That is pretty cool. Now we have to get them to look more like a KPI card. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an accent bar. And this is a cool step too, because you can change these. And this is where I'm going to show you a capability. You can take it next level on yours, but it's going to prove the functionality here for you. So, with the state of default, I'm going to add an accent bar. And again, follow along in the file. Just do these steps in the lab tab. What we're going to do is position the bar at the top and make it a certain width. So I'm clicking here. I think up here I did, let's see, 16. So we'll do 16 down here to keep everything consistent. But what's cool, and this is where you can have some fun, is you can get next level interactions happening. So what I mean by that, is right now the state is default, but maybe if I say when someone selects something, I want the color of this thing to change to like a yellow to show like they clicked it. So because I put state selected, color yellow, boom. Well, that's kind of cool. Okay, now it's just like, bam, Power BI colors even, uh, showing that flipping to yellow. And that same feature is happening with the fill. So as you can see, I click selected. If I go to fill, it's set to black. Maybe if I change that to, you know, yellow as well, you get hardcore yellow, but that doesn't look very good. So you can see that I'll leave the black in there cause it's just kind of a, a good way to show how this thing's flipping around. Okay. So that's the accent bar part and how you can use those. 
I'm going to come back to the apply state, keep it default. Now the key thing, how do we get it to look like this KPI card? We put the visual in there and it says the words, but how do we get the numerical values? All right, let's get into it. What we're going to do first is the value itself is called the callout value in this card. So I'm going to click the callout value. And again, these can change. So in the state of default, I'm going to want it to be, say, size 10 and bold. And this color is a little bit darker gray. Let me get the exact same gray. So it's just everything's matching exactly. If I come back up to here and I go call out value. Oh, actually, I'll do the label. So I'll show you that here in a second. So now we're going to go to uh, this label, change this heading up. All right, so we have the field, the store region. So now we're going to add a label. And in this label section, I'm going to, we'll, we'll continue with the formatting here, but I'm just going to get the data on the card. So to reset, we have, we have the value itself that's filtering, but we need to add the actual amount. So let's just get things on the card and then we'll format them. So what we're going to do is within the callout value, there's going to be something called a label. We can turn that on. As I turn on the label, I'm going to add a calculation. So in this case, I'll show you one and it won't necessarily work perfectly called net sales. <clears throat> so I've just added net sales and you can see that the numbers it's starting to work out where this number is the net sales. And this is what's, this is what unlocks this filtering card where now we can add actual data elements to it, but we'll have to do some formatting and I'll show you how to do that. So with this call out value, I've added this amount, but let's put it in the center and let's just get it to look the same. So what I mean by that is this call out value itself. Let's make it because the label is this number. Let's make it 30 and let's make the font din and we'll make the color the same green and we're getting closer. I know that these aren't matching yet. I'm going to show you how to update those as well. So we want to have this look like money. We want to look the exact same way. So how do we do that? Well, within this, there is some additional things that need to happen when you're putting a label into here. So let's look at the measure. Net sales up here in the top, it is simply, I'll make it bigger. <clears throat> it's saying sum this adjusted sales amount. It's just a normal summing. What we need to do is we have to add a formatting because there's no way to format this value in here through like a typical method. So we have to do it in the measure. What I mean by that is I've created this other thing on the right hand side. Check it out. It's called net sales label. And all it's doing is it's saying, taking the net sales amount, wrapping it in this format function. There's a link. I'll put it in here in the description as well. It goes to Microsoft that shows how to do all these different formatting things. And there's actually probably an easier way to do this where you don't concatenate with the dollar sign. It's just the way I like to solve the problem. But I think there's a formatting feature where you can actually put the dollar sign in the format too. But anyways, what I'm just doing is saying, I want to have whole numbers and I want it to be separated by a comma. Pretty simple, but then add the dollar sign to it. So what I can do now, that's my measure that I've created. I'm going to come back to this section, take off the net sales amount, put on this net sales label. Oh man, look at that. Look at that. Now we have, if we're just looking at these numbers, these numbers are now matching. If I click it, it's filtering and changing as expected. It's actually changing this card at the top too. So let's continue to just tweak this because I don't want this to say Great Lakes. I want it to say Great Lakes net sales. I want to tell the user what it is, but I can't do that by default because the value that it's showing is actually the value it's filtering on. So what we have to do is in your data model, if you have something that you're filtering on stores, people, whatever it is, and you want it to be in a KPI card, just create an additional column. So in this case, if you want to, there's multiple ways to do it depending upon your data model. But in this one, I simply have a, a standard set table and I just entered in uh, a filter name for each category. If I look at this in more detail, transform data, 
bring this over here so you can see it. And we're looking at this now so we can see from store goals. If I go to the source of this, <clears throat> there's just a simple column here where I entered in values. If you wanted to do a calculated column or different things, there's different ways to do it. But essentially, whatever you want to show up in that, in that card as the title, make it as a value in a table that you can call. So I've done that. And so now I'm going to change this to say, I don't want to filter on store region. I actually, let me move this visual here. It's kind of in the way. I actually want to do region filter name. That's the visual that I just created. And you can see great late next sales. Uh, Rocky Mountain net sales is actually showing what it is and this card's really taking shape. So just a couple of smaller things. If I come to the, uh, to this and I go to more colors, this might be the gray. So let's come back to this. I'm going to go to, uh, this value just to make it look exactly the same. <clears throat> and I've just updated that value. So now what have we done? We've just completed the hack. We have done it. Check it out. This top card, you can't interact with it. This bottom one, it looks exactly the same. It's a perfect replica, but you can click with it. You can filter it. It's next level, man. So check that out. You now are equipped with how to build KPIs that people can interact with and filter on. This is super new functionality. Uh, if this is value, valuable to you, subscribe, leave me a comment ask me any questions. I want to keep helping you guys. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy Power BI. Have a great one. Later.